So how do we diagnose spinal cord tumors? Well, there are some spinal cord tumors that are found what we call incidentally, meaning somebody has an MRI or a CAT scan or some other picture of their spinal cord and we find an abnormality and those patients might not have any symptoms whatsoever. So that's one category. The other category are patients who had symptoms and by symptoms that could be weakness in their arms or legs, trouble walking, numbness or tingling, changes in bowel bladder function, um, pain, um, sometimes a change in the curve of the spine or, or what we call scoliosis. So a spinal cord tumor is actually a subset of different tumors that are located within the spine. So the spinal cord itself is a soft substance that the brain extends to the spinal cord and it's an important structure where information passes back and forth through it. But the spinal cord is actually protected in a series of layers. So there's the dura that creates the spinal sac and that contains the fluid that sort of lubricates the spinal cord. And then outside the dura, there's something called the bony spiny column, which is the vertebral bodies and the lamina and spinous processes. So essentially the spinal cord is protected in a sac of fluid and outside that sac of fluid is a ring of bone. So tumors can occur anywhere within any of those different structures. When we talk about spinal cord tumors, we think about things that are actually in the spinal cord tissue itself. And the specific name for those are called intramedullary spinal cord tumors. There are also tumors that are intradural extramedullary, meaning that they're touching the spinal cord and within that really important spinal sac, but not in the spinal cord itself. And then there can be tumors that are along the nerves that come off of the spinal cord. If you think about like a tree and branches, the nerves are like the branches coming off the tree and the spinal cord is the trunk. And then you can also have tumors that are in the soft tissue or bone that are, that are essentially growing in towards the spinal cord. So spinal cord tumors are a, a pretty unique subset of different tumor subtypes. So people often ask me, is it possible to take the tumor out completely? Can you get it all out? And the answer is sometimes yes, but what does that mean? So our goal is always maximal safe resection to take out every last bit of tumor without causing any harm. But what we always know is that tumors are like plants. They're like weeds and they might leave a seed or two behind in the form of a cell. And when we take the tumor out, one of the most important parts of taking it out is to be able to tell you what that tumor is, to give you a name to that tumor and to get the molecular genetic profile or the fingerprint of that tumor because that tells us, is this the tumor type that even if there's a cell left behind, we need to treat? Or is this something that we can just watch with MRIs? Ultimately, the goal is to keep your child safe. And so we will do a safe surgery. We will take out as much of the tumor as we safely can and we'll treat with whatever else is necessary, either now or in the future, but maximal safe resection.